Okay. Where do I even begin? I guess I'll just get into it. Um, hello. Most of you, I'm just putting this on Facebook, so I would hope most of you know who I am. <laughs> um, but it's me, Angelica. I, um, I wanted to make this video. I've been wanting to make this video for a while. I feel like it's a good video to make because it kind of will answer a lot of questions that people I know want to ask me and just haven't asked me. So I'm just going to go right and do it. So I've kind of just wanted to let people know where I am in life right now. And I'm not in the greatest of places. That's really to say the very least. I'm definitely not where I want to be. And it's been quite an emotional roller coaster, to say the very least. Um, I'll start with after graduating from college. After I graduated from Grambling, um, I had the intention of going straight into graduate school. So I did. I went to I went into graduate school for fine arts at um, Academy of Art University in San Francisco, and I did classes online. Now, I've never done classes online. When I was at Grambling, everyone I knew who did classes online, they said it sucked. <laughs> I've never heard, oh, this is the greatest thing in the world. I've never heard that. I always heard it was hard. It sucked. That's all I ever heard. So, when I went into doing, I hate that there's a delay, but there, I, I can't fix that. I have a crappy computer camera. Anyways, so when I went into doing classes online for my master's in fine arts, painting and drawing, I didn't realize how much of a high demand there was. So, because I was doing classes online, I was at home all the time, I didn't go anywhere. We moved to Mississippi officially in 2012. I was still in Ruston in my own apartment with Raquel, um, my sorority sister. And I didn't leave until the, um, the end of July, 2013. So when I came here, mom and grandma were kind of already established and stuff. And we moved from Little Rock or whatever. And, um, you know, this isn't for all Mississippians. This is just my experience. I don't like Mississippi. <laughs> I don't like being here. I don't know anyone here. But then at the same time, I don't try to know anyone here because every time we have moved, which I don't want you to think we've moved all across the world, but I mean, I was born in Las Vegas, stayed there for a while. I was raised in New Orleans. I lived in Little Rock for eight years. Now I'm in Mississippi, randomly, and it just feels like I'm away from everybody. So I don't know anyone. I don't know people in Mississippi. And um, it's been so lonely to be away from like my best friends, either in Louisiana or in Arkansas. <sighs> And I got into this little, like, depressing mood after I moved here where I didn't talk to people, I didn't know people, I was just at home doing classwork, no one knew me, I, I the most I went to was, like, the gas station and Kroger with my mom, and that was it. She's going to work, she's working her butt off. And here I am, just at home with my grandma and our horrible eating habits. <laughs> and as you can tell, it has affected me. But anyway, we'll get to that. <laughs> so it really has been a very um, interesting journey, I guess. So around, I want to say, oh, I mean, it was 2015. It was last year, 2015. In May, I finished up my semester, and I didn't finish up good. My semesters started out really bad because I wasn't being 
I wasn't turning stuff in on time. I wasn't being consistent with my work. I didn't I didn't have that experience at Grambling when I was doing paintings and drawings. We had time in between there of turning stuff in. And I think I took advantage of that and I, I just didn't finish stuff. I, I just didn't get to finish stuff when it came down to this graduate program. And so when I did finish it, it would be past the deadlines. And if you go past deadlines, that messes with your grade, obviously. Even if they give you the section for makeup work, the intention is that you really don't have to use that section, but it don't make it a habit. It was a habit for me. I always, I'm someone, if you know me, you know I am someone who soaks up everything into the last minute. I am one of those last minute people. I'm, I just am, I'm not proud of it, but that's just who I am. I soak it up to the very, like someone says, for example, many of you, cause you know I don't drive. I've tried to drive, but that's something else. That's another part of my depression, but we're not gonna talk about that. Um. Many of you who have driven me, you know that when you're waiting for me to come out, I wait until you're there to be fully dressed and ready to go. I've been getting better with that because I ain't had nobody to be around. But like if my mom's like, she needs me to be ready, I'll be ready. Anyway, that's off topic. I'm just saying I'm a very last minute person. I've always been like that. I'm trying to stop being like that. And I've been doing better, but it, it still sucks. Um... So I was very last minute and it affected my grades and you know I don't have to put this out there but I, I mean it is what it is it's just a lesson learned type of situation um, because I kept doing bad in my semesters I had started in the fall of 2013 my last semester was spring 2015 so most people that do graduate school they're usually done within ten, two years I didn't do too good. I kept having to repeat classes. So eventually I lost my financial aid because my GPA was not meeting what they needed it to be. <sighs> okay, so that sucked. Now, because I lost my financial aid, basically I can't take classes to make up to get back my financial aid until I take like six classes, but I have to pay them out of pocket. My classes are $3,000 a class. That sucks. Um, and by the time I pay for those three class, those six classes, I'll be, I guess, halfway done. It's like 62%, well, it's 62 credits. I'm at 27% of completing my degree, which is not good. It's just a few classes um, out of 100%, yeah. So that sucked. So because I didn't have my financial aid anymore, I didn't get refunds. Now, a lot of people don't know this about me with refunds. I don't do liking at Grambling. I saw so many people, they use their refund for new rims and new cars and new, the most ridiculous stuff. A lot of people put a lot of their, their refund into their tire bucks. I get it not judging I'm just saying but a lot of people did that I didn't do that I would put it in my account I would save it that was that's what I did so it was really my means of living that's why I didn't have a job that's why if you look on my resume I have jobs here and there but I've never had consistent jobs every single last year because I always had refunds now that I didn't have refunds and I wasn't being able to help around the house with the bills or the groceries with my mom having to have the main income because my grandma's retired from teaching, um, I needed a job. So last year in May, I started working for Michaels, as some of you may know. And it wasn't what I was expecting when I first started working there. I've never done stock. I did stock and replenishing, which means stock, literally. You're just stocking up the store. You're making it look all good. You're filling up the shelves. You're getting trucks from receiving. Like, the kind of stuff you think grown, grown men, big 
burly grown men do well that's what we had to do and there was a lot of females <laughs> and um so anyways um I started working for Michaels and it was a new experience for me but because I had spent all those years not doing anything I had gained a lot of weight I gained like 30 pounds from graduation to up to that point and the last time I had weighed myself was that December before and as I started working this job, I started losing weight. It may not look like I got skinny, but I, I lost weight. I lost a lot of weight because I was being active, because I was having to be flexible. I was having to move and sit on floors and get up and do all this other stuff, like stuff most people do any day. I wasn't doing it all for years, so I finally was doing something. And I was kind of less depressed. But unfortunately, with this job, I had to wake up I had to wake up three four o'clock in the morning to be at work for five now this is where my humbling came in I became very humble from this job you never think about how early or how late people have to work in order for the store to look presentable in order for the store to be stocked and so it was a very humbling experience um, to have to be up that early and sometimes we would stay till 12 not understand part time keep that in mind we had to stay till 12 because the job had to get done that's retail it, it is what it is I, I wouldn't take it as horrible labor it just stuff had to get done you know um, so I did that for that year and it was a really good experience me getting back to work was good but it was stressful within me it was stressful um sometimes we wouldn't do stuff right and the team would be in trouble and we would get yelled at like you're supposed to you know you didn't do right if one mess up we all mess up and blah 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 and it's true because then we would all have to stay and fix the problem that's just the way it is and that's okay that's fine i'm not hating on that you do what you got to do um but it got stressful for me at home because my sleeping pattern was bad, my eating pattern was bad, and so from all that weight I had started to lose, I started to gain it back again as the year went on. <sighs> okay, now it's about to get a little emotional. With stress, I went, okay, for most of you who do or don't know, I have epilepsy. Um, I've had epilepsy since I was one and a half years old. I say two, but um, it, I was one and a half when I had my first seizure. And then eventually I was diagnosed with epilepsy. And um, like at first it was the doctors thought the stress of, because at the time I was, in, I was in Las Vegas where I was born. And then me and my mom moved back to New Orleans where, you know, I was raised. And so the doctors were like, well, maybe the stress of the move got to her or something like that. Um, but anyway, I later on eventually was diagnosed with full-blown epilepsy. Now, I used to go to epilepsy camps when I was younger. A lot of people don't know that. I actually used to go to epilepsy camps where I would go and I would encounter different types of kids with different types of epilepsy. And it was a very interesting experience. <laughs> there were very different kinds. I had never even knew existed but I know now they do and so that was when I was younger but in my adult life I never met someone who had full-on epilepsy like me okay I'm trying to get emotional okay um around August the end of August no August just let's just say August um of 2015 last year we had gotten this new guy who started working on our team now of course like I said most of the team is women we didn't really have guys we kind of had guys not really anyways we did and then they ditched us but it's okay whatever <laughs> um, and this guy his, his name was David really really sweet really nice really kind really just an amazing guy um, really cool he really was a cool person he was one of those people that was like anyone could be friends with him he was one of those Caucasian guy 
and really cute just just nice he just was a nice person he like the second day he was there um he was talking to all of us and he he revealed which i think he had revealed to mr chuck our manager before but he had revealed that he had epilepsy and so when I he said that I was like, you mean like epilepsy, like seizures? Like there's only one kind of epilepsy. But I wasn't sure. I never met anyone else who had like full on seizures and full on epilepsy. Like I had a guy friend, but he had it when he was a little kid. He hasn't had it since he's been older. Um, but anyway. And I said, Oh my gosh, I have epilepsy too. It was like meeting a I don't know, it was like meeting someone who was supposed to be your friend for life because we have this common thing that most people don't have most people do not have epilepsy i can tell you that right now it it will surprise you some do but most people just don't they just it's just not you know it's no different than most people don't have other disorders so we bonded over that he told me the type of seizures he had and within the second week of him being there he had a full-on seizure at work. We were in the middle of stocking shelves. He was in the middle of building a grid in the middle of the floor. And he just went, he screamed. All I heard was this big scream. And he was like, oh, and he went into a full-on seizure and fell to the ground. Cause when you're in a, when you're in a seizure, you you have no control of your body it's no different than a stroke it's no different than even a heart attack you really have no control sometimes and so he just fell out went into a full-on seizure we all attended to him mr chuck was like go get something to put on the back of his head um sit him up a certain way he had a full-on seizure i had never witnessed someone having a seizure i'm always the one who has seizures like at home or at camp that was all i knew so it was the first time i had ever saw someone have a full-on seizure in front of me and it was not traumatizing it was it was reality it was a it was the eye opener that's for sure um and so and so after that he woke up from it, didn't even realize he had a seizure. I know I'm just, I, I just turned into talking about him, but this is very important to talk about. I, I need to talk about it to get it out of my system. But um, I had never seen someone had a full on seizure. He didn't even remember. I, I do the same thing when I have seizures. I don't remember I had one. The only way I even know I had one is, is signs. Like when I've bitten my tongue and I have a headache, I'm on the floor sometimes that's the kind of signs I have to know that I had a seizure it sucks but that's that's like whatever and so the week went on him being fine for the most part he started sharing stories of how at his previous job at Kroger's he um he had had a seizure there he had a seizure while he was walking one time and hit the back of his head onto some hard concrete and he his head busted open so he had to get stitches on the back of his head. You could see it. And it was just so traumatizing. Like, oh my gosh, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm fine. It just, it's just the way it is, I guess. That's the way I'm going to have to live the rest of my life. <sighs> okay, now where it gets a little serious and I might cry. So ne the next week, Monday, we're at work. Everybody's fine. You know, he's fine. We're stalking like we usually do. I knew he had been having trouble paying for his medicine which is why he had been in between jobs and he liked Michael's he really liked working there it was, he liked the people it wasn't messy it was just really a nice environment and he liked it he loved the job you know um he did what he had to do so I saw him I saw him Monday and I'm like all right you have a good day I'll see you David and he's like see you later you know his usual self <sighs> So Tuesday comes, the next day, and Miss Wanda, my supervisor um, for the replenishment team, she calls me and my f former coworker into the office, and she tells us what happened Monday after David left work. He had went home, 
um, his fiance, you could say fiance, his fiance, Sarah, had left for like a little bit or something like that. And he was fine when she left. He went into a seizure and he died. And I didn't, as she's telling the story, I had no idea what she was going to say. And that really messed me. I've cried over this a million times. That's why I'm, I'm glad I'm not crying right now. I don't know. I feel like I will in a little bit. But she said he died. And I was like, no, no, he, he, no. She's like, yes, he died yesterday. That messed me up so bad. I had never met anyone like me. And I thought it was going to be like a good life changing experience, you know, to meet someone who had epilepsy like me. And there for like three weeks you know so it's like I got to know this person I'm thinking this is going to be life changing this is going to be great and to know that he had one seizure and he died it was a complete reality check it was a complete reality check for me you know I have friends, I tell them, oh, I can't drink, I can't do this, I can't do that because of seizures. And they're like, oh, come on, come on. So I would still go ahead and pressure myself into, yeah, I'm just going to have one drink, blah, blah, blah. And sometimes drinking triggers my seizures. Sometimes, not every time. But now I've completely just stopped drinking because that really messed me up. And I think, and I didn't realize it till my mom, I met with a cardiologist earlier this week. And my mom mentioned him at the session with my, not cardiologist, Lord Jesus, neurologist, I'm sorry. I met with a neurologist this week. I hadn't had a neurologist in a long time. When you have a brain disorder, it is important that you have a neurologist to check on you because it is just important you want if something happens to you really bad they have to reference to certain doctors for you because of your specific condition and she mentioned him and I broke down crying because I didn't realize how much his death had affected me and I had been in this depressing mode, of course, for, for years, but that really messed me up. And I, I couldn't understand how, and I get it, it's life, you still got to move on, you still got to do what you got to do. I couldn't understand how everyone could just move on after he had died, how they could move on with life. And then it, it took me a while to understand. You know, they probably had their life experiences. They probably had their trauma and their tragedy. And I knew a few of them that had. I had one coworker. She had had breast cancer once. Had another one. She lost her only child. I'm my mother's only child. So I can only imagine how traumatic that is. And it just happened so fast. And so that was from September last year to now. It's been a year. And what's crazy, my last seizure was this year, which would have been the exact year of his death. And I didn't even think about his death when I had a seizure. I didn't even think about him. I just had a seizure. So that really put me in a depressing mode. And I've been really back and forth ever since. And I don't talk about it. I really don't. It messed me up so bad. 
because at the end of the day no one else understands it unless they're going through it no one could understand how much that messed me up unless they had epilepsy or they knew someone who had epilepsy and they see what happens people die from epilepsy i have the kind of seizures that happen in my sleep which means i could have a seizure in my sleep and not wake up and that is scary enough but to know that i've met someone who would just have them anywhere and the one place he has it and dies is at his own home yeah that's fun isn't it no it's not it, it it sucked so at the end of june let me move on at the end of june i quit my job they started the hours started to become weird and i i, I wanted to be an adult and grown and i decided to make an executive decision and i quit I had given my two weeks notice. Most people I had worked with had not even done that. I was trying to be professional with it. I was trying to give them a heads up, I'm leaving. I, I can't do it. I had been mentioning leaving for a few months, but I didn't know what was gonna happen with a lot of stuff. And so eventually I had made the decision that I was gonna leave at the end of June, and I did. Right after that, I went on a trip with Angie and Raquel, and um, I just thought it was gonna be like a reliever. Um, but nothing has really fully relieved me from that experience so anyway so I've been searching for work I have not had a job since I had quit and I'm not used to not having anything in my account I have nothing I have no money in my account you know, I'm starting to really not like money. I hate money. I hate the fact that you absolutely have to have money in order to live. Which people will be like, no, you don't. No, you don't. Yeah, you do. You do. You you have to have money in order to live. And it has been a struggle for my mom. She's not the... The other thing, though, is my mom is not the kind of person who just doesn't have a plan. But she's also the kind of person who's not going to put her stress on other people. That's just not her. She'll stress herself for other people before she does that that's just who she is and so we're not charity cases we're not going to sit there and be like oh i want money i need money blah 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 we just got to do what we got to do so i've been searching for work and i had applied to at least 30 places and you think you know it's past school time no one's really looking for jobs you know the kids and stuff been there you know and you would think, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I can get hired soon. Yeah, I'm not tripping. I'm, I was overly confident thinking I could just get hired within a week of losing my job. Not, not losing, leaving my job. And I'm also trying to be prideful and don't want to go back. Because it's the kind of job I could go back if I wanted to. Because they're really nice people, very flexible. And I have previous experience with it in two different areas of the place so it was one of those things where I really could but I, I I just I wanted the whole point was leaving was to upgrade per se upgrade get a job that was closer to the house get a job that was going to pay more all that kind of stuff that was what I was looking for um I haven't found that yet I've had two interviews well I have an interview today that's kind of why I actually look decent for once but <laughs> I have an interview today and I hadn't had anyone trying to hire me or anything since June and it has been very depressing and to see my mother struggle to keep me and my grandmother fed as well as herself she's been working like a dog like she's always done her whole life and I just wanted to finally get it together so in conclusions <laughs> in conclusion i mean it, it it's all good i just wanted to make this video i had been wanting to make this video for a long time to kind of let everybody know where i am you know it's really messed up when i look on social media which is why i try to stay away from social media nowadays when i look on social media and i see everybody progressing in their life like literally every uh, uh, I'll say a lot of people it feels like everyone I know but 
a lot of people that were in my life previously, they've all either gotten married or have kids or have a career together or all three. And here I am. I have no kids. I have no husband. I'm about to be 27 in a few weeks. I am not where I want to be. It has been very depressing. It really has. You know, I hate that word. It's a real sensitive word. But you got to call it, got to call it as it is. I'm depressed. And I've been trying to really just grow up and deal with it. People have had had it worse. And I have to constantly tell myself that I could not have a home. I could not have a computer. I have three computers. <laughs> Two of them are broken, but they, they work. They work. Anyway, the, I'm not trying to say something. I'm just trying to say I could have nothing. I have never, I can say this now, and I can say this with, with, a, with a clean mind and a, and a whole heart. I have never had to need anything. Like need, like I cannot get this. I need this in my life. I've never had to need. I've always had my needs. I've always had what I would needed, you know, required, you know, food, water, a place to live. I've always had that. I have a family enough where they've, I have, I have, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Some people don't have that at all. So I have to count my blessings. I'm always going to count my blessings. I'm always going to be thankful to God because my situation could have been worse. I could have been David, you know, I could have been someone who doesn't have anything, and look at me. I have a lot. I do. My mom has always worked hard to make sure I never needed anything. But but when I was little, I was a very simple child. You know, like you could ask her. She'd be like, what do you want for your birthday? And I'd be like, oh, I just want some paper. <laughs> some $4 pack of paper so I can just draw. That's, that's me. Anyone who knows me know I'd take any opportunity to draw. That's just me. And I didn't need anything else. Um, my dad, you know, if they had to correspond to make sure I had something, they did. And he would come through when I just absolutely needed him to come through. Most people don't have their fathers in their life at all. And I have mine, you know. And I have my sister. When my sister was not where I knew she was, like I didn't know where she was for a long time. I was so worried because she was my last link to a sibling. I didn't grow up with siblings. All my cousins had their first cousins. So it was like they were siblings and then all they had their cousin their their siblings and I didn't have that. I didn't have close bonds with everyone. I was that child who would go in the yard and go into imaginary land, but with myself, by myself. No one would be with me. No one hung out with me like that. I had neighborhood kids here and there I used to hang out with but not consistently. I was mainly by myself all my life. What you gonna do, you know? But, um, so yeah, so I've always had, and I'm, you know, I'm very thankful for that. There are so many people who have not, and my sister, you know, when she made it back home to my dad, I was so happy, I was so overwhelmed. I, to this day, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, but I haven't shown it to her the way I want to. And there's so much I want to do to just welcome her even more. And I just haven't gotten it together. I have not been as consistent with a lot of things as I wish I had been. But, you know, I'll figure it out, I guess. Um, but yeah, I, this video is pretty long. I didn't mean to make it this long. I didn't mean to ramble. This is just who I am. I ramble a lot. <laughs> if you know me, I talk and I talk and I talk. And like, okay, get to the point. <laughs> but um, whoever's watching this, thank you for watching it. You didn't have to, but you did. And um, yeah, that's what's been going on with me. And I mean, don't, you know, don't, don't think I'm not happy for everyone who's succeeding in life. I'm so happy for everyone. I'm glad to hear of people being married and being happy and having kids and being successful like that makes me happy a lot of guys that I used to talk to are that literally most of them are married with kids and have a career that is so good 
I'm so happy for you. I really am. But I am not in that place. <laughs> I do not have anything concrete right now in my life. And I'm just trying to figure it all out. And it kills me that I'm not as consistent with talking to my friends. I see people going to homecoming, hanging out. I see people just hanging out in general. And I'm one of those people, yeah, I, I ain't gonna lie, I get in my feelings when I'm not invited or I'm not included. But at the same time, it's like, well, can I really even afford to be included? No, I'm not in a place where I can just do that. I am completely just a mess. So, yeah. Anyway, that's all I had to say. Um... I don't know, I might not even put this video up. I might completely just do another one. <sighs> Which is a mess. <laughs> I'm not a crying on cue type of girl. So I hopefully the next time I don't cry and break down. But it, it was a lot better than it usually was. I, anytime I talk about that subject, I usually am like bawling. So anyways. But um... So yeah, I just wanted to kind of let you guys know what's going on with me. Um, if you care, I mean, I don't. I'm not upset if you don't. People are living their lives. That's the whole point. I just wanted to get this out my system. It's one of those things. If I don't get out my system, it's going to get at me and it's going to eat at me. And I'm like, I should have just. It's therapeutic. So this is helping me. So bear with me. Um, but yeah, um, God bless you guys, and I might, I'm, I'm probably going to be making a lot of videos <laughs> soon, so bear with me, deal with me, please, anyways, you guys take care, bye.